Sure thing. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, welcome, Anthony. Uh, good to have you on board, mate. Uh, tell us how long this has been in the in the works for. I oh, appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, um, the, you know, as soon as uh, free agency kind of started, um, Tazzy came in and, uh, you know, it was, it was an option that I was, um, you know, seriously considering. And then, you know, talking to, to, to coach and, uh, you know, talking to Jack a little bit, um, you know, I was able to get a good insight of what it's like over in Tazzy and um, just seemed like a really good fit and uh, something I wanted to explore. Yeah, tell us about your relationship with Jack. Are you as crazy as him, or are we going to have two people to deal with like him now? Or? <laughs> uh, I'll say we compliment each other. Um, uh, me and Jack, you know, we're, we're really good mates. Um, um, uh, I'm really looking forward to playing with him again, and uh, I think we compliment each other well uh, on and off the court. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be a, a bit of a dynamic duo. Uh, Scott's always said people come here with no promises and things like that, so you gotta, you got to work for, for what you get. Um, but how do you see yourself fitting into this team? Yeah, uh, I think that's that's kind of that's kind of everywhere, right? Um, you you got to come in and you got to earn earn your keep. Um, I'm just you know I want to get over there and just just get to work and and whatever happens happens type of thing. I just want to help the team. Uh, I want to help the community. Uh, I want to want to put Tazzy on top. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting over there and getting to work. What have you made of the Jack Jumpers' first couple of seasons in the comp? Uh, no doubt you've been watching and will play against them uh, as well from afar. But uh, you yeah, enjoyed the, the ride they've been on? Yeah, it's incredible. Um, I mean, the, the, the results they've had in the first two seasons, are, you know, it's unheard of for a new organisation. Um, it just shows how, how strong the, uh, the, you know, the Tasmanian culture and the team and the city is. Um, so being able to be a part of that, I'm just super excited. And, you know, hopefully we can take it that next step. Thanks, mate. I'll let someone else jump in. Hey, Anthony, so John here, mate. How you going? Good, how are you? Yeah, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Um, yeah, I guess what's it like as a rival player to play against the Jack Jumpers? What's on the, I guess, the, you know, the, the, the sheet to, to, to try and get over the top of? And, and what are those aspects that are really attracted you to, to want to be a part of as well? Yeah, um, you know, one thing my whole career I've, I've tried to hang my hat on is, is, is try to be one of the guys out there playing the hardest. And, uh, you know, when you're playing against Tassie, you're playing against 12 guys who are playing harder or just as hard or harder than you are. So, you know, they, they, they show up and they hang their hat on that. And, um, you know, being able to be a part of that, um, I feel like I'm going to be able to fit in perfectly. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm just excited to be a part of the uh, the team, the organisation, the city. And, um, yeah, I'm pumped. Um, um, I was just going to say, hi, Anthony. Um, congratulations on the on the signing. Um, what do you feel like... Um, you'll bring most to, to the franchise and, and to the team on court? Honestly, uh, whatever they need. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to get in there and, uh, you know, help the team reach that next level. Like I said, you know, they've been able to uh, um, have success in the season and in postseason so far, um, you know, and then, you know, against that next step of, of winning a championship. So, um, you know, whatever whatever Scott and the, and the team needs for me to do, I'm going to be able to just come in and, and hopefully do that. Yeah, and obviously you've had you know seven years of experience in the NBL at, at two different um, franchises. Um, you know what what sort of experience can you bring um, to you know a, a new franchise? You know it's only in its um, third year. Yeah, bit of an old head now, um, a vet. Um, yeah, just the experience. I, I can't really pinpoint anything. Um, I feel like you know I've played played a long time in the league now, playing basketball forever. Um, yeah, just bring that that toughness, that tenacity, and you know, just just help the boys. Cheers, mate. I guess it's a chance to win a premiership as well, mate. Uh, sorry, a championship as well, I should say. Um, you know, it's been a, obviously been a long time in the league, and a chance to be the first to do something at a, at an organisation is it was a massive appeal, I'd imagine as well. Yeah, I mean, personally, I, I really want to win a championship, and um, you know, with with all the options I had. Uh, this just seemed like a no-brainer. Um, you know, values and everything align with with, with what, who I am as a person, and you know what Tasmania are as a team and, and a city. So um, it made sense. And then, yeah, being able to win a championship with a, with a team like Tasmania, who's only been in the in the league now, well, going to be three years, um, it would be amazing. So um, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. Um, I know the team's looking forward to the challenge, and uh, yeah, can't wait to get started. Just the one year deal at this stage, mate. But do you envisage yourself being here for as long as you can, mate? For sure. Um, I've, I've I've said it before. You know, I I don't like bouncing around too much. Um, you know, it's professional sports, so it does happen. Um, but you know, if I can get in there and settle in, and uh, you know, 
uh, Scott likes what he sees. Um, I, I for sure couldn't envision myself uh, finishing my career there. So, um, you know, obviously, like I said, it's it's pro sports, and a lot of thing goes, a lot of things go into to the works. But um, yeah, for sure, could see myself there. Excuse my ignorance. Are you playing NBL one at the moment, and when do you expect to sort of relocate to Tassie? Yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll finish up NBL one season, but um, you know, I'll, I think I'll come mid July, uh, just. Uh, before August starts, um, and then if I've got any other games for the NBA one, I'm I'm sure I'll just fly in and out if, if possible. Who are you playing for at the moment, mate? Uh, the West Adelaide Bearcats. Yeah, cool, beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else um, want to ask Anthony anything before we go to coach? I'm all good, my end. I'm all good. Sweet. Any uh, chance you can come a bit close to the camera, Scott, or is it too tricky where you are? Uh, I'd be scared to move at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, tell us what you liked about Anthony as a player. Obviously, we know what he can do. We've seen him play. But uh, from your perspective, what, what have you liked? Well, actually, we played against him for the last two years. So, you know, he's a pesky defender, you know, kind of an intricate guy that you're always kind of uh, dealing with when you have to play against him. Uh, his shooting is, is something that was obviously very attractive to us. Um, and then just the, the ability to have that experience and add someone of his age and uh, been around a little bit and understands uh, what it means uh, to play nightly and, and to compete. And so he takes a lot of boxes and, you know, he's very much in our grit and grind kind of mentality of the guys that we're looking for. And, you know, we, we had this deal done for, for quite a while with him once free agency started. It was very, to be honest, a quick conversation and a quick few phone, phone calls and he was in. Uh, he's exactly the type of player that we're looking for that wants to be in Tasmania, um, that wants to compete and fight for uh, his chances to be on the floor. And those are the kind of guys that we continue to try to look for um, to play here. Did Jack need to get into your ear at all, or were you uh, sold on him already before talking to McVay? Well, Jack's always in my ear about everything. So, uh, <laughs> but Jack obviously, you know, loves uh, loves Dream and 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 uh, his wife and his and his child, and so. Uh, uh, that was obviously a huge help. But he has a lot of connections with a lot of our players on our roster. So for him to just to be um, coming over, I think the transition would be very comfortable for him and his family. We are a family-oriented organization. And so uh, we're, we're going to welcome uh, Jen and Levi into the, our group and, and have Drim with us. And it'll be, a, I think, it's a, a natural, seamless fit for us. I guess when he when he was asked uh, what what does he think he can bring and 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 um, Anthony said whatever whatever the team needs I guess that um, exemplifies what you're looking for those players that you you're looking for to fit that kind of um, mindset. Yeah, I mean uh, you know it's been interesting to hear my my two years of going through uh, just free agencies and things that are transpiring and and you know listen every team here has a different way of, of approaching things. Some teams are trying to buy championships. Some teams are. Uh, promising starting roles or minutes played or specific roles and all these teams have the right to do what they need to do to get players across the line uh, our you know battle cry from day one is just to find the the, the the humble and hungry guys that are just willing to take the path uh, of, that's a little more tougher and um, a lot of players seek uh, you know less resistance and want to have areas where they can just slide into places and, and compete um, we're looking for obviously for the opposite in general. We're looking for the guys that just want to be in Tasmania and want to be able to compete nightly and play. And he fits uh, and ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah, sweet. G'day, Scott. Um, this obviously marks your first signing of the of the free agency period. Um, I imagine this is a very busy time for you. Um, you know, how many how many more um, are you looking at trying to bring in before the um, before the season starts? Well, we have uh, two more roster spots to fill. We're going through that currently. And, you know, we, we don't have a lot of wiggle room. We have these two spots and we kind of have to see how the rest of the um, uh, things transition from out of here. So we have two spots and we're looking for two different types of players in those spots. And then um, I think very shortly here, we'll start to uh, look towards our DPs um, and see what we can do there with our development of players. And then probably sometime in uh, May uh, or late May, we start to think about uh, filling the imports in around um, the rest of the roster. Yeah, and last time you said you were very, very confident about Milton Doyle. Um, I suppose, is that still the, the case um, or any developments there? I mean, you could add the fourth very onto the very, very, very. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I suppose the last one, um, 
Josh Majette obviously suffered that really bad injury at the end of last season. Um, is how is he tracking? Um, and uh, are you guys looking to re-sign him as well? Well, he's. Uh, we I texted with him. I don't know about two weeks ago, and uh, he's fully recovered and and <laughs> has been there at the end of March to, to go back to playing without a mask and moving around. So we've been in contact with him, as we have been with Rashard, just in general, just just it's the right thing to do. Uh, they know our timetable where we're at, and and we're again um, weeks away from really figuring out what our next move is on the import side. Thank you. That's all I need. Yep. I guess obviously that to have um, Anthony on board, um, you know, it helps fill that. I guess some of that shooting power with uh, with, with Maddie Kenyon leaving as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, when you know this is a little unique situation, especially for me, is you know when you when you have a team and you're ten or twelve years into your team and players are coming and going, it it is obviously emotional to lose players. But when you start a franchise from the beginning and you lose players right off the bat, uh, just because it's the nature of the beast and you know, Sam McDaniel leaves or Matt Kenyon leaves, you know, they're tremendous players, uh, but they're even better human beings. And so uh, for the first two years, you know, they're part of what we've done here. And and to have Matt, you know, sign in, in Southeast, you know, we, we're, we're always cheering for Matt and, and love him to death. Um, you know, we offered him a contract. It didn't work out. That's fine. And we just move on. But um, it's a little bit more sentimental with some of these guys because we started the franchise with them. And so we always wish them wish them well. Um, and again, you know, uh, the players that we will end up, you know, transitioning out of here um, are just high character guys that have really made a huge impact in the state here. And we wish them well. And then we're on to our next phase of trying to get new players in here to replace them uh, and try to improve our roster. So just on Kenny Scott, um, yeah, you just said, I think you just said you, you offered him a new contract. So is that a case of him? Being offered more, um, more of a contract as in time frame at, at Southeast, or more money, or is it more of a chance of him of a fresh start? Does he tell you why he wanted to, to move on? I think it's um, probably a combination of all that in some fashion or form. He might have gotten an extra year. We were only offering a, a one-year deal at that time, so um, I'm not sure the dynamics of what that contract is. Obviously, I'll, I'll, I won't know that, but um, we we felt we, like we had a fair offer, obviously, and and his role was his role when he was here, so. Um, it is what it is. You know, we're also, you know, always trying to promote our guys and go and, and get better jobs, more money, um, in, increase your career. And, you know, the reality is Kenny, uh, three years ago was, was playing in the NBL and NBL one, and no one really was paying much attention to him. And we filled our A spot and, and we feel like, um, the coaching staff in this organization rejuvenized his career. And those are the things that, um, are hugely important to us. And, and how we want to be viewed as a club also that, you know, we're, we're giving guys, uh, as I've mentioned so many times before, underdogs, guys that need a second chance uh, that are on a different kind of journey. Um, this is your landing spot. This is the place to reignite yourself uh, in your career or continue where your career is and try to take it to another level. So we're quite proud of the fact that, you know, these guys are getting uh, better jobs. I mean, Isaac White, you know, everyone loves him to death and there's no question about it. But again, he's another guy that was just struggling to try to even stay in the league, and now he signs a two-year contract. So, you know, a lot of credit goes to him. He did the work, but believe me, our, our coaching staff and this organization uh, backed him probably like he's never been back before. And it's again a, uh, an outstanding um, sign that our, our our organization is doing the right thing uh, all the time and supporting these players. And we're not going to get them all across the line. We're just we're just not. Guys are going to choose, like I said before different pathways for money, for uh, guaranteed playing spots, for teams being built around them, for things that are promised to them that I will never ever promise anyone as long as I'm the Jack Jumpers coach. Uh, my career has been built around earning everything you get. Nothing is given to you. Um, and we're just looking for the most competitive kind of guys we can to come in here and compete. Just wanted to double back to what you sort of answered before about um, how other teams are sort of approaching free agency. It's quite interesting. What what are agents uh, saying to you, I suppose, when they're, you know, in discussions about their players coming to the Jack Jumpers? What's the number one priority at the moment, do you think? Well, I think you know, you're getting 50-50 there. You're getting uh, some agents that are obviously, they're trying to get as much money as they can, the best opportunities in their eyes for their players. I think sometimes... Um, the agents are also not envisioned of the best situations. They're just trying to push the envelope as far as they can. And that's fine. They have the right to do that. Um, and in our situation, you know, um, 
we could probably be a turnoff at some point because uh, we're not giving those things away. We we value those things highly of, of competing and getting a roster spot and playing your role and, and being part of the, the 11 or 12 guys that show up every single night to play for us. Um, and to give some of those things away, a starting job or X amount of minutes, to me, just one, is it's not what I stand for, but I, I think it's um, been proven the last year that the value uh, of our culture and what is driven here is to represent the state and Tasmania and people here are hard workers. And I surely wouldn't want to give a, any kind of player, I don't care who it is, uh, guaranteed minutes or guaranteed starting or those type of things. Um, and it's every right for every agent or every player to ask those things, but it's just not um, what's going to happen down here as long as I'm here. You said you were going to catch up with Trey Armstrong a couple of weeks ago. Um, how'd that go? And oh, no, I know he played well on the weekend for the Thunder over in Victoria. Um, how are you feeling about him at the moment? Yeah, well, we've talked to you know both both the Armstrongs, and uh, again, we're going to start addressing some of our other roster needs and our and our other roster spots. Uh, we've had good conversations with them. Those will, will stay internal with us. Um, I'll be up there this weekend in Launceston to watch uh, watch them play again and. And we'll go from there, and, and I'm hoping here in the next week to 10 days that the um, the local side of things of us get taken care of and done, and, and then we'll go from there. But we've had good conversations, and again, those are two you know outstanding players, great kids, tremendous family up there, and um, you know they're they're searching for opportunities too, and uh, sometimes they align and sometimes they don't, and and we'll try to be there when we can to make sure that we can support them and and hopefully land them here. But if they choose to go other places, they choose to go other places. It's not the worst thing in the world. It just means that one more Tasmanian's in the league. And when you only have one, <laughs> they get two, then they get three, um, regardless of where they're playing, is a huge step for the state. We asked Christine about Tanner the other day and she sort of covered off on that. But just from your perspective, I guess you've, you've said, you know, that he was on your radar and only Tasmanian as we've spoken about. So would you have liked to have seen him here or is that just another case of, um, potentially better off for elsewhere. Well, we had conversations with him. I talked with Tanner, but you know, we're not, we're not, you know, yeah, I think he believed he got a, a two year deal or two years plus one year. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, we weren't offering those kind of deals. You know, again, we have to be very um, um, savvy with how we spend our money. And, you know, we're not uh, at the high end of things of obviously uh, paying players. And we have to be very smart in how we uh, have availability uh, year after year to try to add players. And so, um, the budget is the budget. We try to stay within those guidelines that have been given to us. And um, yeah, we just can't uh, sometimes compete with other teams that are just going to throw more money at you. So uh, those are obviously choices that the agent and the player makes. And then we just move on to the next player at that point. And you've been popping up everywhere across the state. Are you counting down the days till you go home? Yeah, I'm excited to go home. I, I'm actually going to go home next Saturday, a week from this Saturday coming up on the 29th. Um, looking forward to obviously getting back and, and, and seeing my house actually again. Uh, but um, uh, there's still some work to be done here in the next you know 12 days or so before I go. And like I said, I'll be up in the Northwest and more um, this weekend again uh, to make sure that uh, you know we're, we're connecting with our fan base out there and obviously to support the Torns and, and Sarah Beal and her group and then also uh, watch the Thunder play. Is it true you're swimming home so you don't have to catch a plane? What was that? Is it true you're going to swim home so you don't have to catch a plane? Well, if it's cancelled, I will. You know, with Qantas, you never know. So uh, <laughs> see, we'll see how it all plays out. There's always the there's always the spirit of Tasmania. So one way or another, I'm going across. Very good. A couple sponsors that own boats down here, so if I have to pay my way out, I'm 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 all about that too. Beautiful. Any others before we wrap up? I'm good, Mayan. <clears throat> I'm all good. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. And Trim, stay on the line. You're there. Stay there, please. Thanks, guys. Talk to you.